two main subjects we're going to discuss today. We'll discuss later part of the session, Mitz Hashem, the idea of two days of festival, as you know, in the diaspora for Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, we are celebrating two days. Versus in Israel, they are celebrating only one day. What's the reason behind that? But before that, we continue the subject of yesterday and day before yesterday, which is the question of Muktzeh. For those who walk in, to refresh your memory. In the Mishnah, originally speaking, the first page of this tractate, the Mishnah discuss the, the disputation between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel in regard to egg that laid on festival. Egg laid on festival, Beit Shammai said, you can go ahead and eat it. Beit Hillel said, you cannot eat it. We explain day before yesterday and continuing yesterday that there are four avenues of understanding Beit Hillel prohibition of eating that egg that laid on a festival. The first opinion we learn is Rav Nachman, who said that this was an egg that laid out of a chicken that designated for what? For the purpose of having eggs. And we explain, if you remember, day before yesterday, that if a farmer or people who raise those chicken have different categories. One category, you have a, a uh, what is called hen house, right? A chicken house that designated only for eggs. There is another one that they make it a, like a commercial. You take it and you sell it as a meat, chicken. So Rav Nachman holds that that egg is under the category of mukte set aside because it's for the chicken that designated to have eggs and therefore whatever come out of mukte it's also a mukte and therefore that egg is prohibited to both to eat it and even to carry that egg because it's a mukte it's set aside rabba and very important to remember that name rabba is the second opinion he hold that that's under the category of chicken that designated for food, for meat. And that's a biblical prohibition because we know the Torah tells us you should prepare a day in advance that we learn from the story of manna. We have manna from heaven and we need to have a double portion on Friday that maintain for the two days, upcoming two days. And therefore, since it was not a setting up in advance, it happens during the holiday. It's um, either because the holiday it's on Sunday following Shabbat or the Shabbat following holiday that occurred on Friday. So therefore, it's biblical. You enter the domain of biblical prohibition. Third view we learned yesterday was Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef said that that's a rabbinic decree because of the fruits that left the tree. What does that mean? You have a tree. Just refresh the memory. You have a tree and the tree have fruits. We are prohibited on Shabbat to go and cut, cut the tree and eat it. Why is it? Because that a derivative of biblical prohibition it's called harvesting. Is no different between harvesting as harvesting or collecting it. So because you have a biblical prohibition, you put a rabbinic boundary around it, and you said in juxtaposition to the two between the egg and the fruit, and it's prohibited. In short, you can go back to the session of yesterday for details. For explanation why the house of Hillel prohibited the egg that laid on, on a festival, it's because a liquid that sip out of fruit. And we explained yesterday, if you have, again, if you have a fruit on a tree and the fruit have a, a juice that licking out of the fruit, we are prohibited to drink that, that, that juice. Why? Because again, it's a boundary. The rabbi is concerned that the next thing a person do is threshing. 
and it's basically you selecting something from something that exists and people who are not from, or, or familiar or you yourself get used to something and then you mix up between something that is totally prohibited and something that is a rabbinic decree so the rabbi said you cannot do that now where we stopped yesterday we stopped yesterday with the um, discussion over one in a thousand we explain when you have an egg that come out of the chicken and all of a sudden it mix with others so the rabbis come in and said that's even by thousand cannot be nullified what does that mean again we jump to another subject and then you see the connection when it's come to isu veheter when you have for example our discussion the other day of a meat if you have a pot that contain meat and a small size of meat that it's non-kosher mixed with the other meat we explain that in some circumstance we need to measure one for sixty and then if it's below than that it's in a way swallow with that and you can go ahead and use it versus as David asked yesterday if you have a fly even a small size that jump inside a big pot of meat the moment that it's in that pot the entire meat need to be thrown away. Why? Not because of FDA regulation, but because in the, in the way we understand the Torah, it, it, um, that fly, it's basically contaminated the whole meat. Mm -hmm. It's over. In that sense, since you have that egg and you're not sure which one, and every one of even, let's exaggerate and say thousands of eggs, can be the one that it's born today that it's prohibited to eat so therefore you cannot use it so now we are on page four Rav Ashi Amar 13 lines from the top of the page Rav Ashi Amar Le'olam Safek Yom Tov Safek Chol okay we have a discussion over two days either we have Shabbat and Sunday is a festival or Friday is a festival, and then the following Saturday, Shabbat, is a subsequent of a festival. So we have this rabbinic, remember, rabbinic prohibition that said that if you have an egg that was born on the festival, the rabbi said that since you are in a quandary, you are not sure, therefore you go in that sense by rabbinic prohibition and therefore you go lenient so we have an issue we said if it's a rabbinic we understand that you go lenient but if it's a biblical biblical uh, um, uh, uncertainty then you go stringent so Rav Ashi said we are here in our discussion speaking about egg but you're not sure if it was born on a festival or was born a regular day, which is rabbinic issue. So again, you have a situation in that sense um, that the egg was born, let's say, on Friday, and yesterday was a regular day. So basically, if it is something like that, that the whole preparation of the egg and the process took place in a regular day not a holiday now since the egg was born today on friday you have a so far a rabbinic issue so you said not today not tomorrow but on sunday you can eat it or if it was born in a regular festival following uh, um, uh, if it was laid i meant if it was laid I meant to say laid uh, the, the egg laid at the uh, festival you go by the next day and can eat it so davar she yesh lo matirin so this considering something that we can go ahead and find a way to allow it vechol davar she yesh lo matirin afilu be de rabbanan lo batel so here we talk a little bit tower of what a mixture of something that it's prohibited and something that you allow so we prefer in that sense to go and say wait wait for the next day don't uh, try to even that it's rabbinic uh, uncertainty 
go and wait for the next day. So we basically try to find a way to be lenient. But if it's something like that, that you're not so sure, let's wait. Tanya, אחרים אומרים משום רבי אליעזר, ביצה תאכל היא אימה. So here we have a new discussion which is in a way connected indirectly with the previous discussion, meaning if you have an egg that laid on the festival, so you can go ahead and eat it. Now what's the um, uh, idea? Rabbi Eliezer was a student of Beit Shammai and Ritva said he followed their direction. And since they said it's not an issue, so you can go ahead and eat both. Now, mm-hmm. let's understand it. As we explained earlier, there are two different chickens. One is for lading eggs, and one is for meat. So if you talk about egg that, that laid from a chicken that designated for food, Pshita dehivi imashaya. So here in my book, we write Klomar be Rashi. I follow this Rashi because Rashi said Klomar in Balomar kebeit shamay la shmuna betza imal amali pshita deshaya. So here Rashi basically bothered what's the big chidush, what's the, the news here. <laughs> we understand simply, as simple as can be, that, that even according to Beit Hillel, it's not an issue. Why it's not an issue? Because that, that uh, chicken designated for food. So, Ela betarnegoleta omedet legadel beitzim hivi ma'asura. Now we go to the different category. That chicken was designated for laid eggs. So, wait a second. If this is the story, then both are prohibited. Why? The, the chicken itself is muktzeh because it's set aside. It's designated for laid eggs. And therefore, whatever comes out of muktzeh, it's also muktzeh. So therefore, both the chicken and the egg, both prohibited. Which means, if you go ahead and eat it during the festival, as a meat, by the way, you eat the egg. So again, let's understand. You are now in a situation that you need ochel nefesh, you need the food for the festival. And we explain, unlike Shabbat, when you need this as a food, you're allowed to go ahead and, and take the animal, a, um, a uh, slaughter it and eat it on a festival. By the way, oh, you open, there is egg, so you can go ahead and eat it. Hey, Chedami. So now we go to the explanation. And we explain many times that by halacha we always go by the thought, the, the, the intent. So what happened here? A fellow purchased that chicken, just went to the market, boom, purchased it. Now, when he purchases it, he doesn't know in his mind what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. You know people like that? Mm-hmm. I do know people like that. They buy it impetuously sometimes. You go to people, the markets, you go to the mall and see it many times. And people have no clue what they are buying, what they're buying, how they're going to use it, etc. So this guy purchased it and he didn't make up in his mind if he's going to eat the chicken as a meat or he wants the chicken to, to lay the eggs, okay? And now, what happened? Now all of a sudden it's a festival and he slaughtered the, the, that chicken. Now you go by the idea of Breira. Let's refresh our memory, a subject that we discussed in the past many times. Mm-hmm. The idea of Breira. Breira meaning when you have an action that wasn't clear in advance by doing certain action, you retroactively created a, a something that wasn't clear um, before, before it set up. So in other words, now by slaughtering that chicken, 
it turns that the original intent, meaning by halachic category, even the person himself can say, it wasn't my intent, but since it, it's now slaughtered, we take it as a retroactive act, and in that sense, we judge it as a, a, something that was selected in advance, the mm-hmm. intent was in advance, to have it as a meat, and therefore, if it's a meat, therefore the egg that comes out of the meat, you can eat it, which means you combine here the idea of breira, of selection, with the mukze. And therefore, since it's slaughtered on a festival, we understand retroactively that Mr. A purchased it in order to eat it as a meat, regardless if it was originally in his intent by the merely fact that it was slaughtered, and therefore the chicken and the egg that laid out of the chicken, both of them are permissible, permitted to eat. However, lo nishchata, if you are now in a festival, and the meat, the chicken, wasn't slaughtered, now what do you understand? Huvrera, the legadel beitzin momedet. Now you understand that this Mr. let's call him Reuven, this Reuven, he purchased that chicken in order to lay eggs. He's not intent to eat it. Oh, if that's the case, and now we have a retroactive understanding for him purchasing it because he's not slaughtering it today in this festival. So therefore, you can go ahead and say that not only the chicken is prohibited to eat today at the festival, but even the egg is muktzah and you cannot use it. So therefore, now we understand what the Brighter used the term teachel hi ve'ima, that the chicken and the egg can be eaten, because by merely fact that this Reuven slaughtering it today, we understand retroactively that the intent was that this chicken is, should be as a meat, and therefore, according to Beit Shammah, is not an issue. So in other words, so far we understand Beit Hillel. Now we need to understand the mindset of Beit Shammai. So now we get the point. Rav Mari Amar Guzmatani. Rav Mari said, you know what? Sometimes when people speak, they use a language, a little bit of exaggeration to emphasize certain things. The Tanya. So the sages said that, okay, if you have a situation that uh, egg was laid on a festival, so you can eat it, the, the, the egg and the mother, and the same applied to a small chick with its shell. What does that mean? My klipato, what do you mean by the layer, by the shell of the egg? Ile ma klipava mash, klipava tachilai? You mean to say that, that the, 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 how do you call it, the shell, right, of the mm-hmm. egg? It's, 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 it's not something that people eat. I read one time is a research that they have some vitamin or something that they use it as a pills or something. They took right, the right. shell of the eggs. But the reality is people don't eat this. Okay? Ela efroach beklipato which means you can go ahead and eat the chick while it's in each shell. So what do you mean? Adkan lupliklera de Rabbi Ezer ben Yaakov so um, we said, the Torah tells us in the book of Vayikra, chapter 11, that part of creeping animals that were prohibited to eat, it's um, a chick that didn't open his eyes. Mm. So if you have a chick like that in a shell, and, and you open a little bit the shell, you see the right. chick, and you don't even open the eyes, that's considering a creeping animal is prohibited okay. to eat. Mm-hmm. You have to say that this little chick is come out of the, of the egg, and the sages go ahead and said, may in that circumstance, even if he didn't open his eyes, you can go ahead and eat it. So it means that everyone agrees if it's not breathing yet, it's a creeping animal, it's prohibited to eat. You have to say that it's only exaggeration to eat the shell with the cheek. So we juxtapose the two in order to emphasize the whole idea of the chicken and the egg can be eaten together. It's just a point to strengthen our view. 
which is again, we go by the retroactive act and we judge according to the action a person takes during the festival. And that's basically the view of Beit Shammai. Now we go the Amorai discussion over egg that was laid on a festival. So here, unlike the Mishnah, just to make sure that we all understand, in the Mishnah we speak about egg that laid and we have an issue of the same day. Now we have a discussion of the subsequent day, which is if the festival occurred on Friday, can we eat the subsequent day on Saturday on Shabbat? Or if the egg was laid on Saturday on Shabbat, and now Sunday is the festival, can we go ahead and eat it? Eatma. Shabbat v'yom tov. If you have Shabbat and Sunday is the festival. Rav Amar, Nolda Baze, Asua Baze, Rabbi Yochan Amar, Nolda Baze, Muterat Baze. Rav said, if the, the, the egg laid on Saturday, you cannot eat it on Sunday. Rav Yochanan said, if the egg was laid on Shabbat, on Saturday, you can go ahead and eat by the subsequent day. And that disputation applies also the other way around on Friday and the following Shabbat. Now we elaborate on that. Neymar Kasava Rav. Rav who said that if it was born in the Shabbat, you cannot eat it the, the following Sunday. Kedusha Achati. So it means that he said that that's considering a one long day. Again, to refresh our memory, yesterday we discussed the Rosh Hashanah. And we explained that the Rosh Hashanah in conclusion, it's one long day. Hmm. Not two separate entities. So if it's one long day, so therefore Shabbat and the following Sunday, it's one long day. So if it was born on Shabbat, you cannot eat it in the subsequent day. So, um, so Tosfot uh, the issue with that uh, is the issue of Migo, because if it was born on Shabbat, so why you cannot eat it after Shabbat? And um, um, uh, he elaborated on that. But basically he said, he tried to say, the whole idea of Migo, just to refresh our memory, Migo meaning, mm -hmm. if you did not have in your mind before Shabbat, you didn't designate it in, before Shabbat, before the sunset on Friday, so it's now Muktze, and that Muktze, it carries, it, pos it, it, it continue on for the entire Shabbat. So if you have, for example, fruit on a tree, and the fruit on a tree is on the tree on Friday afternoon. So therefore, that fruit is prohibited to take, not just since I didn't designate before Shabbat, it's go for the entire Shabbat, which means me go from today to tomorrow. Anyway, so here we said, the Amarav, Rav said, in tractate the Uvin, we study at page 38, Halacha ke'arba'az kenim. That's the four sages. Which means they hold that it's a two separate entity of, of sanctification, of holiness, Shabbat and a festival. Two separate ones. So, but since they are two separate ones, so we treat it accordingly. So if it's one Kedusha, one long day, you cannot you cannot eat it. But if it's two, you can eat it. So what, what we try, try to say, we try to say is uh, we derive from a story we study in, in Tractate Uvin, uh, uh, page 38. So to refresh our memories, what happened on a, that Shabbat? Imagine a fellow, let's call him, call him uh, Shimon. Mm. This fellow Shimon, he lived in a city, let's call that city for the sake of understanding, Crofton, okay? And he heard that in the close by city in Severna Park and let's say Bui, the two close by cities, there are two great speakers going to speak. Now it's a Shabbat and a festival. Now it's Friday. He needs to set up his plan. He wants to go on Shabbat to the next city, to Severna Park, to hear, uh, let's call it, Rabbi Abraham. Mm -hmm. And then he won the sub subsequent Sunday 
to go to the next door for the sake of understanding, let's say, Bui, to hear Rabbi Yitzchak. So what happened? One is in the western part of his dwelling, one is the eastern part of dwelling. So we measure it. That's the way he does that. We are allowed to go 2,000 cubits from the place of dwelling. So this is his plan. Now is Friday, I declare upon now, I set up that tomorrow on Saturday, I am going to walk up to 2,000 cubits west of where I am, and I'm going to dwell there in order to hear Rabbi Abraham. Then, since he's in a two-tower cubit, I can come back to my home in Crofton, and I'm fine. Then, the day after that, which is the following festival on Sunday, I am planning to go east, 2,000 cubit from my home in Crofton, to hear Rabbi Yitzchak. So now, bear with me. If you tell me that it's a two separate entities, a two separate kdushot, two separate holy days that each of them carry is independence, significance of holiness, therefore it's not a problem, right? Because it's each of them, it's not one long day. Here there are two separate days. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now back to our subject, you see how it's connected. Here you have to say that Rav and Rabbi Yochanan disputed what Rabbi said. What Rabbi said. So there is an issue of preparation. The Muktze between Kodesh and Kodesh. Kodesh meaning the Shabbat and other Kodesh is the subsequent Sunday. So Rav eat Lehachana de Rabbi. The Rabbi Yochanan late Le'achana de Rabba. So Rav said that since we need to have a preparation in advance, it's called Achana. So therefore the egg is prohibited at, at the following day. Even you tell me that these are two separate days, since it was prepared, laid on the first day that it was a holy day, so therefore... Uh, you can it, it will lay on Shabbat, you cannot use it the following day. Hmm. Okay? Rabbi Yochanan did not hold that. And therefore, he said that you can, following the day, which is festival, you can eat it. So therefore, you can go ahead and eat it. Now, the whole idea, just to elaborate for a moment, based on the Tosfot in Meiri, is the discussion here is what exactly you mean to say by telling us that you have to have hachana, you have to have preparation. Let's say the egg laid on Saturday, on Shabbat. And Sunday is the festival. Now, we discussed yesterday the act of having the egg in the mother's womb, it doesn't happen just boom. It was prepared by, you can, earlier. And in that sense, it was prepared even on Friday. So what's the story? So Tosfot tells us that even by having the egg coming out, there is some type of preparations. What does that mean? Hmm. That, that um, even that it's made in heaven, it's still considering a act of preparation. So again, the rabbis have a big discussion, the Ran and others, if it's, uh, the whole idea is that it's a rabbinic prohibition on the second day, or it's a biblical. So according to the first avenue of the Tosfot, it's um, um, biblical. According to the second one, it's rabbinic. So he said, <coughs> Ketanai, that's follow the Tanai disputation. So the first view is, if you have a Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, and Friday was a festival, okay? So if the egg laid on Friday, you can eat it in the subsequent day on Shabbat. If the egg laid on Saturday, on Shabbat, 
and the following Sunday is a festival, you can eat it the following day. Because the prohibition applies only for that exact day that the egg laid. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Mishum Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda disputed, and he said, a daini machloket, this scenario is still part of the disputation between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, she Beit Shammai umim te'achel, Beit Hillel lo te'achel. So Beit Shammai said, you can go ahead and eat it, and Beit Hillel said, no, the same way it's prohibited the first day, um, um, it prohibited the second day. Why is that? Because they follow the whole idea of Rabbah. Remember the second view we explained mm-hmm. earlier? Rabbah said that you need to have a preparation in advance. And since you are concerned about one Kedusha, one holy day, so therefore you cannot eat it the subsequent day. Story. Here we said, Ush Pi Zich Nei De Rav Ada Barava. I'm using my book because Rashi here used the word Klomar. So they said here, Havu lehach hanach beitzim yom tov le Shabbat. He has an egg that was bo- that was laid on Friday before Shabbat, and he wanted to eat those egg on Shabbat. Ata lekamei, he came before Rav Ada Ava on the festival. Ve'amar lei mai le'advinu aidna aidna. So how about if we, can we um, um, roast it today, that is a festival that you're allowed to cook, and eat it tomorrow. He said, what do you think? So therefore you cannot do it today because you're basically preparing from the festival for Shabbat. Afilu Rabbi Yochanan lo kashar ela legom'a lemachar avul yomei lo. So even Rabbi Yochanan allow it to do what? To to um, drink it um, uh, the following day. But that day that was uh, laid, he did not allow even to carry it. So Therefore, you cannot have an avenue to roast the egg today in order to eat it tomorrow, which is Shabbat. Now, Tanya, wait a second, we have another brighter that said, Achad beitza shenolda be Shabbat, v'achad beitza shenolda be Yom Tov, regardless if the egg laid on Shabbat or a festival, ain metaltelim ota, you cannot carry it, lo lechasot ba et akli, not to cover the vessel and not to use in those days they use it as one of the um, supported point for bed so you cannot use it for those uh, purposes so I have an, an egg that laid on Shabbat that was a, a eve of the festival that occurred on Sunday and that fellow wanted to eat that egg on Sunday he came before of Papa and he asked a question can I do that? he responded he said to him, smart rabbi, he said, go back and come back tomorrow and I'll explain to you. The Rav lo muki amura Because Rav did not, um, um, what happened those days, they used to have a translator that translate to people, the, the public orator, the public speaking, from one festival to another. Mishum Shichut. So the Torah tells us after the story of two sons of Aaron that passed, that a rabbi, a leader, cannot uh, rule, halachic ruling Torah, while he is in a state of drinking. We learn it from the story of the two sons of Aaron that perished mm-hmm. because a, a fire came from heaven and consumed them. That the rabbi said that they are intoxicated while they're in service in the temple. So we derive from that 
that a sage that needs to rule, he cannot rule, he needs to have a time period between the time that he's drinking and the time that he's ruling. Okay? So therefore, he was um, um, engaged with the meal of the festival, so he needs to wait, but that's what the rabbi tells us, he needs to wait a certain period of time before he only when he's sure that he is no longer in, he's totally sober, right? Is sober, right? Is not no mm-hmm. longer drunk, then he can eat. That's the shach in your red eye in Reish Mumen Bet, two hundred forty-two forty-two in the cold. So the reason he, he asked that fellow to come the next day, he wants to make sure that um, his mind is clear. He's not part of the kiata lemacha. So that fellow will come and ask. Of a follow the following day, Amar Leir of Papa said to him, page four B, Iku hashta ishtalai ve'amre lach Rav Rabbi Yochanan halachak Rabbi Yochanan. He says, Oh, oh, we are so lucky that I ask you to come back. He said because if I answer right away while I'm not there mm-hmm. or because I was drinking. I will tell you to follow Rabbi Yochanan. He says, if he if nolda beze, muter beze, that if he was born in the first, in one day, he can go ahead and, and use it the following day. However, in this specific halacha, ha'amar rava, we're going to study the next page, hil chetak vatei derav behana itlat. You go by the rav in these three halachot, which means, Bein lekula, bein lechumra. If you have two sacred days that are subsequent to each other, you go by the rab, regardless if it's lenient or if it's uh, stringent. So, therefore, you cannot eat the egg the following day, following rab, either because it's the idea of hachana that rabba told us not to do it, or because it's yom arichta, it's a long day. And you see in these three incidences that you have the disputation in regards to egg that laid on the first day, um, Rav prohibited that egg even the, sef- the following day. If it's the two days of a festival, Rav allowed the egg the second day. If it's uh, two days of Rosh Hashanah, Rav prohibited even the second day. So the reef tells us here that um, if you have a Chol Mechin Shabbat, which means a regular day that you prepare for the following day, which is Shabbat, but Shabbat cannot, um, uh, Achana cannot prepare for the holiday. So he said, and I quote the Rosh, the Rosh said, I'm just giving the vignette on that. I followed the reef, the way that Rabbi said that Isu Achana, the prohibition of preparation, so basically that's a rabbinic very far away rabbinic decree and he brought a beautiful Yerushalmi Yerushalmi said if you have for example in those days they used to have uh, olive oil in order to prepare the, the, uh, in order to lead the candles of Shabbat so imagine if you have Shabbat and the following day it's Sunday you prepare on Friday those candles that have uh, olive oil. And you prepare those ptilot. How do you say ptilot? Those wicks? Wicks. Wicks. You so prepare those wicks on Friday. Now Shabbat is uh, over. Can you use it? Is that considering mechin mikodesh le kodesh? Preparing from holidays to another holiday. So he brought the Yerushalmi that he said that it's because Kedusha Achat is one long day, not because Achana the Rabbah. So, it's, it's, so therefore they do it. Now, he derived another in, interesting halacha from that. In my childhood, I remember my dad, God bless him for many more years, he mm-hmm. always on Friday used to prepare, we are nine and eight children, so dad prepared 10 candles, one for the parents and eight for the children prepared it on Friday. He set up all the, the ten candles, he lit them and extinguished them and prepared the wicks nicely. And then mom comes when the time to light candles and she lit the candles. Mm-hmm. So he did it in that way. 
So that's basically the tour in Mishnah Bura um, said that that's based on what we discuss here. The book called Korbanet El said in Ot Pei, that's the reason why we have on Friday, and he said, V'chen matzati b'mordechai b'shem Aram Merotenburg. So basically when you're preparing something like that, hachana, preparing from, from a festival, or um, from a, a regular Friday to Saturday to Shabbat, that's the way they do that. They prepare those weeks in advance, so it's ready for the following day. So Amar Rabbi Yochanan, you have a palm tree, for example, or any tree. And people use, especially think of um, those days, but people use those wood pieces for, um, for heating their homes. In our days, there are some homes, right, that use corals mm. or wood to, to warm the home. Now, here is the problem. You have a tree, and all of a sudden some branches fall from that palm tree. Now you have a wood, pieces of wood. So, so you have Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, you look outside of your house and you notice that some branches just broke out of the tree. So the question is, can you go and take these pieces of wood and use them, not today, not on Shabbat, but can you use it tomorrow, um, the following day? So he said, What's the issue is, if you have the tree that, that, that fall apart or, or some branches um, 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 broke out, it's a rabbinic prohibition that's called Gzeira Shemaya Levi Itlosh. The idea is, remember the Migo? We explained the Tosfot at, the very, at, a, at page 3a. He said, since you have migo did katsai, since it's prohibited before the, the sacred day, so therefore it's prohibited for the entire day. So therefore, you cannot go ahead and use for the following day. Why? The rabbi said, the fear is that if you allow a person to do that, guess what he's going to do next? He is not familiar, he is take a letter next time mm-hmm. and come and cut and basically harvest the fruits, the produce from, from the branches, from the tree. The Arteshi Veni Beitza, Rabbi Yochan said, if you compare that to the issue of egg, which means egg that laid on Shabbat, and you have the following day of festival, so um, it's okay. Why? Because here, when in the situation of tree, that, that, that um, um, uh, part of the wood, cut on Shabbat, um, the following day on Sunday is prohibited. Why? My tama. Since the egg, you can use it for that day, to drink that egg, because the day that it laid, it was Shabbat. So you can take that egg while it's chaya, while it's still fresh, meaning it's not cooked, not used for anything. Um, um, so... Even it's rare, but there are people, let's face it, there are people that can, I saw it in Japan, there are people who, who drink the egg alive, mm-hmm. which means it's come out of the chicken, they break a little bit yeah. of a piece raw, thank you. They drink it raw. There are people, I know it sounds crazy, but I saw it. I went, I think I told you, I went to Osaka, to, um, to South Japan once, and I saw in Kobe, Kobe is a city on the borderline, when I was a uh, import export uh, manager, I saw a night close next door to my room in a hotel that was a, a um, waterfront. Mm-hmm. So I saw people, um, um, young Japanese, they open a raw egg and, and drink it, and they took sardines alive and they eat it. Mm-hmm. I never saw something in my life. I couldn't <laughs> eat that day. But anyway, there are people like that. You cannot eat it until the following day, which is a festival. May they do so people will be aware the bat yoma asura that egg that laid on the festival is prohibited. Even we allow that egg that was laid yesterday, which is Shabbat, which means that uh, people distinguish and understand the difference. However, it seemed the lochazula yomaihu. 
because that pieces of wood, that branches that left the tree is not befitting for that day, even without the prohibition of Muktze. Why? Because the Torah tells us clearly you cannot make a fire on Shabbat. And you didn't know in advance before Shabbat that it's Muktze. Here is the problem. You know what happened with people who are not educated? If you allow them the following day, which is Sunday, which is a festival, people are not people mix up, and they think that if you have a tree, a branches that fall on the festival that day, it's not the issue. It's not even an issue of mukze. So when it's come to a egg that laid and he, he didn't uh, uh, drink it raw on Shabbat because it's muktzeh. So a person knows that on Shabbat it's prohibited, right? And therefore it's led. You, you're not concerned about mistakes. But the next day that it's festival, it's Yom Tov, so it's a new day, it's two separate kdushot, two separate entities. And therefore, you treat it differently versus if you talk a piece of wood, you cannot uh, use it as a wood fire, it's a, it's a coal, because um, uh, um, that day, maybe it's not the issue, but people will mix all of that. And the next year, they, they're going to mix everything. So therefore, we are prohibited there. So all of that, what we understand, that... Um, it, it, um, it follow Rabbi Yohanan, that he doesn't follow Rabba. that say that that um, the certain situation of Achana preparation that it's prohibited, but uh, according to Rav, follow Rabba, that that he said that is the issue of Achana preparation. So you cannot have Achana mikodesh lekodesh. You cannot prepare from one holy day to another. So even Rabbi Shimon, that is more lenient when it's come to Mukse. You talk about something that attached to the ground before the Shabbat or festival that it's mukze, but here the 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 pieces of food are prohibited on, on a festival that subsequent the Shabbat because it's hachana. Another halacha in regards to wood pieces that left the tree during the festival. Amarav matna etzim sheleshum ledek ledoch atanu biyom tov marbim al etzim amachonim masikam. If you have a big, in those days they have a large oven, and you have uh, those pieces of wood, so imagine that the tree is out in the yard, not in the kitchen, mm -hmm. okay? And left the wood, so he can add more, it's not a mukze, and he can use it. So the Gemara asks, When he moved the, the pieces of wood inside the oven, he must probably move those pieces of wood that are mukze, that prohibited to use. So you see in the code in Tafkaf Zain, Seif Katan Yud, there is an issue, it's called Tiltul Bin Atzad. That um, the whole idea of using it as a indirect connection, that's called Mukze de Rabbanan. It's a rabbinic Mukze, it's not an issue. So the Gemara responds and it said, Kevan Deruba de Teraninu. Because most of the wood in the, that large oven, it's wood that we do not have. So therefore, the rest is uh, unnullified. So that's Isu Beheta, we explained several times. Remember that we um, talked about Kashrut and we said 1 by 60, nullified? Mm -hmm. So in that sense, good morning, Elliot. Wow. Um, so in that sense, here we said the same. You have a big oven. You have pieces of wood in the oven. If another piece of wood jump in, it's already nullified by all the others. So all the others are taking the 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 charge. So the run said uh, all of that apply if you don't recognize it. But if you recognize, for example, this wood is a very strong brown and the rest of them are um, in the red color, and you recognize the difference between the wood, 
the Ran said that if it's Nikala Ayn, if you recognize, you cannot say that it's nullified. It's not Batel Bero. So the Gemara challenged that and he said, Ve'aka mevatel isura lechatchila. So he basically made it intentionally when he combined the pieces of wood in the oven. Utnanu learned in the Mishnah, Ein mevatlin isur lechatchila. That's a famous Mishnah in Tractate Trumot, chapter 5, Mishnah 9 said that if you have a truma, a contribution in a size of se'a that fell in the, in the big one, big, big um, uh, container that have 99 se'a of unconsecrated item, so everything else it's combined with that and it's uh, permitted. In other words, it's, um, it's like in a way swallowed with all the others. Mm-hmm. So he said, Hanemilei bideoraita. That's apply that you are not allowed to nullify something that is prohibited, applies to something that is biblical. For example, truma, that a foreign cannot eat it. So Tosfot explained to us, I give you the vignette. Tosfot said that the oraita truma is chameshet minei dagan, is the five species of grain. Rabbinically speaking, is Sha'aperot, the other fruits. So he said, Aval be Rabbanan, Mevatlin. So if the basis is the Oraita is biblical, so then it's an issue. So since this Mukte, it's Rabbinic, the prohibition is Rabbinic, you cannot, you, I'm sorry, you can add wood to other woods, and that basically nullified the Mukze. Ul Ravashi de Amar, how about Ravashi that said, Kol davar sheesh lo matirin afilu barabanan lo batir. So therefore, the rest of the wood should be allowed. My ikale meimar, how we explain that this wood is permissible. Uh, he said, uh, <coughs> it's Mukze. And Mukze, you can use it after the, f- the festival. So, so why you allow it? So I said, Hanemi lei heicha deite leisura beenei, aval mikla kale isura. So when it's not nullified, even if it's rabbinic, so if you talk about this wood, it's, um, you don't need the, the tree, or you don't need the wood by itself. You have no need for the wood. What you have is, Afterward, when you take this wood, you take this coral and use it afterward, you have the hana'ah, you have the, the, the benefit, the joy, after it's gone, which means later you have the joy. Now, when you take this wood and you put it in the oven, you don't have the, the, any benefits. The benefits come when it's done. So mm-hmm. therefore, something, even with 1,000 lobatel, so the Ran in the Tractate Nedarim elaborated on that and said only in the same species the Barbemino yesh lo matirim. But if this en lo matirim, for example, if you talk about egg, egg today it led you cannot eat it, right? But tomorrow it's not an issue. But if you have something that if you don't eat it today, tomorrow it's spoiled. You don't say that this is davar sheesh lo matirim because tomorrow it's going to be spoiled. So therefore, the sages brought it up and said, the, the, then it's, it's nullified. So again, those muktze of wood applies only, it's, it's gone when it's burned with the, with the fire. It's no longer mm. part of that. So you use it, so if, if you use it, the Mishnah Bura said, if you use it for that day, for that moment, because you enjoy uh, the, the heating of your house, that's the, 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 the issue, meaning you derive benefit from those wood only um, afterward, after you finish them and you cook, you bake, mm-hmm. with that heat that come out. Now, we back to the subject of the Shnei Tovim Shigaliyot, and that's a subject that I referred to at the very beginning of this session. And that's a fascinating subject because originally speaking, as we all know, 
um, it was a bet din in Yerushalayim that sent emissary to the cities in exile to inform people of a festival. So therefore, if it was a issue of a uncertainty, certain festival took place more than one day. It was two days. And you see to this very day in diaspora that we have a celebration of two days of festival. Now we zoom in and understand that. It marks name into the if you have two days of the festival. So now the reason is that two days because you have uncertainty. One day is sacred, one day is not. According to Rab, he said um, you, you can go ahead and if it's laid in one day, you can use it, you can use the egg the other day. Why? Because if you have a, a Friday festival or Sunday festival, you, know, you have only hachana de rabba, but that's not, not the issue. Rabbi Asi Amar, no, Dabbezi Asur, Rabbezi Rabbi Asi said, no, if it's laid in one day, it's prohibited in another. Lema Kasaba Rabbi Asi Kedusha Achati, and Rashi said, Chachamim Kvaum al Bnei Gulala Asutam Ledorot, the sages put to a future generation as well, Mechamat Safek Zeh, because of that uh, uncertainty, so the reason to this very day we have two days of Yontev, two days of festival in Diaspora, in Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, is the sages prohibition. Ravasi used to make Havdala, which um, um, from one festival to another. So there are some Mephoshim that dealt with the question, how can we make a bracha of something that is Suffolk? But we, are, we don't have the time for that. Ravas is a book of Mesab So the Gemara explained that contradiction and said, since he is a quandary, so since he's not sure which day is the correct day of the festival, so then he holds stringency in both days. We follow Ravasi. Why? Now we know already which one is the correct one, yet we still hold that these are two days um, uh, for people who live in diaspora, even that they are not in a quandary, they still s- s- uh, observe it as a one long day. It says, We in Tractor Rosh Hashanah, page 22, Originally they uh, used to have a torch that carried from one top of the hill to the other. Mishil Kalua Kutim, Kutim was a group who explained uh, several times that it was a um, group of people that are uh, wicked. The Gemara said in Kiddushin, page 45, or in Yuma, page 69, that they are basically um, uh, people who challenge the oral teaching, not believe in the oral to and create a lot of, of um, um, uh, friction and a lot of misleading among the people. So the sages have no choice by force of circumstance. They sent an emissary to each community to make sure that people are not misled by the Kutim. You're going to tell me that if it wasn't them, they make it one day. So therefore the egg allowed the second day because one of those two days is a regular day. Now we know exactly what day is the correct day. Common question. So why we have a two days festival? So he said, Mishalchum Itam, the sages of Eretz Yisrael sent to Babylon and said, He is Aruba min Agavotchem Biadchem, be careful to follow the tradition of two days from your ancestors. We know why. We don't know what's happening in the future by us. Zim in the Gazro Malchut Gzeira. So many times we have a decree against us, and if the leaders will put a decree against us, then the Atela Kalkul, and then we again going to be in a quandary which day is the right day. So the truth is, Beth didn't even know without the witnesses. But they knew, it's called Soda Ibu, they knew the all secrets of calculation, how to make the exact day. But unfortunately, it ha- so not what they knew exactly to make sure that Yom Kippur is not on Sunday and to make the 10th of David in our days, etc., etc. But if it was Exerat Malchut, the, the, the authorities put the decree against us, and now you have a quandary between the two days. So the Maskana, the reef and the rosh said, We go by three things, follow the rab, which means if you have a Yom Tov, a festival following <laughs> Shabbat, or Shabbat follow festival, rab said that you follow the rabba, that he concerned about the Hana, and therefore the egg that led is prohibited. So if you have a two days of diaspora of Shnei Yom Tov, so we go by the rab, lenient, 
So Rav, the truth is said that the second day, the egg is permissible. So the two days, the whole reason of the two days, it's only because you are uncertain. So Aliba the Emet, the truth is, it's not considering one Kedusha, and therefore the egg, the following day, can be eaten. Shulchan Aruch Horachayim 3.22, an egg laid on Shabbat is prohibited on a festival that occurs following Sunday. So in other words, if you own a farm uh, or, or, or uh, some type of uh, uh, you have in your yard a chicken, and it laid the egg on Shabbat, you cannot use it for the following Sunday to festival. Likewise, an egg that laid on a festival that occurs on Friday is prohibited on a subsequent Shabbat. That's basically the follow of Rav, the whole idea of Achana. It seems Shana Shumina Dekel, you see that this is also practical in 507. If branches fall from a palm tree on a festival or on a Shabbat that immediately precedes a festival, it is prohibited to use them to kindle a fire on a festival. That's basically the way Rav Yochanan tells us. If the branches fell into an oven that already contained other wood, one may add to the permitted wood and thereby nullify the prohibited branches by the majority. Mm-hmm. Batel Baro, that's the Magen Avraham citing the Ram. This must be performed in a manner that the result will be that the prohibited wood is um, uh, indiscusable. In other words, you don't recognize that it, it's combined. But as we said, if we query a, let's say, a red color and a dark brown color, and you recognize it's a problem. We explain that the idea of a bitul isu lechatchila. It is prohibited to nullify the prohibition item lechatchila. So e- even if the prohibited item falls into a permitted sub- substance that is not large enough to nullify it, why may not add more to permitted uh, material for this pur- purpose? So, um, so we explain example. An egg laid on the first festival day of the diaspora is permitted on a second festival day. That's basically a follow up. Then we said uh, the big question that people ask about observing the festival days of the diaspora. That's a um, Rambam, Ilchot Yom Tov chapter 1 and Ilchot Kiddush HaChodesh chapter 5. Two festival days are observed outside of Eretz Israel, the second of which applies by rabbinic law, although today the months are calculated ahead of time in accordance with the establishment calendar, the sages decree that Jews living outside of Eretz Israel should uphold the custom of their fathers, of their ancestors. So an egg laid on the first day of Rosh Hashanah is prohibited on the second day as well, as the two days are considered a single sanctity. That's basically the, the view of Rav and Shmuel. Shuloim, Malachai, Shuloim, Malachai.